Hi, welcome to Ask Less. We had an interesting question come up from a customer who's utilizing a uh, Vortex tube, much like the one I have in my hand. Uh, Vortex tube being a device that takes compressed air, spins it one way, and then spins it back inside itself another way, causing a heat separation where one end gets very, very cold. This customer required at his product minus 20 degrees C for that particular application, which meant that inside the vortex tube it was even colder, maybe even minus 30 degrees C because there was some warming as the cold air traveled to the part through the delivery hose. What was happening is that every once in a while the vortex tube just stopped flowing just stop. Then after some seconds later, it would start flowing again. Then after another minute or so, it would freeze again. And so on and so on. The cycle kept repeating. So the customer is saying, is there something wrong with the vortex tube? Well, here's the situation. Vortex tubes and dew point. The dew point of a compressed air line of the compressed air supply is the temperature at which, at that pressure, is the temperature at which the uh, moisture in the compressed air will condense out. So what was happening is that the dew point being supplied to the vortex tube was about zero, a little bit above zero degrees Celsius. When the temperature inside the vortex tube dropped to minus three degrees Celsius, you started getting below the dew point, even though the pressure was a little bit lower as well inside. The dew point was below the temperature at which the moisture would start to condense from the compressed air. So you would get little droplets of moisture inside. It would freeze because it was very, very cold and it would block the flow. Then after a little while, it would melt because there was no more flow. So no more vortex effect, no more cold temperature. And as it melted, the flow would start up again. And then after a while, it would freeze again because of the cold temperature. The solution was quite simple. They switched to an instrument air supply, which had a dew point of minus 40 degrees Celsius. Now, what's important here is the application. Most vortex tubes are designed for optimum cooling, not for minus uh, really cold temperature, although we can supply it to minus 50 degrees Celsius in many cases, but you don't want to. You don't need to in many applications. Cooling effect is determined by two things, by the cold temperature coming out and also by the flow rate. The colder the temperature, the lower the flow rate coming out. So in actual fact, the best cooling effect is when the temperature coming out of the vortex tube is around zero degrees Celsius. If you get much below that, you could be dealing with the possibility of condensation because your compressed air supply normally being plant air, normally that compressed air has a dew point of around zero degrees Celsius or just a little bit above. So if you're using a vortex tube for normal cooling, uh, spot cooling and dry machining, for example, or cooling a control panel, uh, where you certainly don't want condensation going inside the control panel, the Vortex 2 would be designed to have the temperature come out at around zero degrees Celsius, and that's what you want. So if someone is trying to tell you that their Vortex 2 system is better because their temperature is a lot lower, they're actually doing a disservice. You, anybody can set the temperature of the Vortex 2 lower. Anyone can, but you don't want to for most cooling applications. In this particular case where the customer needed the cold temperature, that's different. But if you need that kind of a cold temperature, you have to consider the dew point of the compressed air supply. So, if you have any questions concerning the use of compressed air for blow off, moving, cooling, drying, ask less.